This is our 10th full day at sea, and we're only about 300 nautical miles from making landfall in the Azores. After being disconnected from the world for this long, we've completely fell into the rhythms of Delos and the ocean. For all we know, we're the last people on the planet. And I don't think any of us would mind right now. Good morning. Um, everybody's nice and fast asleep. I try to make it as comfy as possible over the swell at the moment, so we're just cutting across the top of it. Delos has definitely proven herself once again. Over the past few days, I really got into tune with her and really started focusing on all the nitty gritty details of how she was constructed. And now I'm blown away about how sturdy she is, how strong she is, how easy going she is, how while well she sails, how easy she is to sail single-handedly. Blown away every day there's something new that I discover which just makes sailing so much easier. Yeah, she's a beautiful boat and people that go with it are even more beautiful, you know? And yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody part of the Delos tribe to make this possible and yeah just to enjoy and look at that every single morning when we wake up. It never ever gets old. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain, with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. Blue has summoned me to fly the drone. <laughs> it always makes me so nervous. But that's why we got it. That's why that thing is built, so. I mean, worst case scenario, you lose the drone, right? It's not like life is in danger, it just sucks. I get, I get more nervous about flying a drone than I do about like crossing an ocean. <laughs> To ease my nerves, I made a catching handle prototype while in Bermuda. The only issue, version one is quite heavy. Hold on, I'm not getting any. Oh. I'm not getting any feedback. Oh, oh, that one was close. No, it's good. The drone got itself. <laughs> Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yo! 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 
Successful! That is so cute! Yeah. Funny. Every time she catches a... Yeah! <laughs> it's so good! <laughs> oh, man! It's the only time I ever feel like having a cigarette is after I land the f***ing <laughs> I don't even think he slowed down then. Oh, he did, yeah. Okay, good job, guys. Nice job, everybody. That makes for a buffer. <laughs> the neat idea of making hash browns and we keep hash browns in the freezer so I go on a little adventure open the freezer and it looks like we killed someone there's a lot of blood in it I was like Ugh! turns out all the berries have defrosted and I was like oh no and then it turns out the whole freezer's defrosted <laughs> And now that we have it all cleaned out, we need to determine if the flip got switched and oh. that was the problem or if something's actually wrong with the motor. Oh yeah. It's good. It's running. It's good? Yeah. Fridge defrosted today, freezer defrosted today, and the salmon's not bad, so I'm just gonna cook it up. I know, I know. In the previous episode, I said we decided on this trip that the only meat we were gonna eat on the boat is stuff that we actually caught on the boat. But before leaving Florida, our buddy Jim gave us a beautiful piece of salmon to cook up for a special occasion. Since it completely defrosted, this was that special occasion. It would have been the worst carbon footprint just to throw it out into the ocean yeah. after it had been caught, flown to Pompano Beach, sailed halfway across the Atlantic. Yeah. But we gotta eat it. We've been at sea for like almost 10 days, 9 days, something like that. So we deserve a little bit of salmon on hash browns. You excited, Brian? All right, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Going up and cheating my toes in it. Dig in, boys. Oh, man. Oh, with the lemon. <laughs> Whoa. It's been way too long. <laughs> oh, that tastes so good. What is happening, Lee? Well, we were just up on the bow, like, messing around with the guitar and looking at the moonrise and stuff, and then we came back here and all the electronics are off and we were turning up into the wind. Autopilot's off, all the instruments are off. Can you flip those back and forth real quick? Power cuts are kind of airy enough as it is when it's, uh, when you're on land in a house, let alone in the middle of the sea with no one around, when night's falling, yeah. All right, we're good. We've never done that before. Because um, we were running running power and stuff on the boat a lot today, and cooking and... And yesterday was And yesterday we didn't run the generator, so... The, um, pretty much the, the boat just shut itself off because the voltage got so low that everything just turned off to the boat. Uh, yeah, it just shows you when, say, systems go down, how quickly the boat kind of heads to wind. Um, obviously, if the autopilot goes or something like that, and it just gets sucked up straight into there and once you back window and you got a pole out or something like that then you're just going to start bending things and destroying stuff and ripping sails. If sails are old then those sails yeah. would have been completely ripped. So it just shows you how quickly things happen. Yeah. I know it's what's so important to be in the cockpit on watch, right? Yeah. If it was stronger conditions we could have really damaged the boat or ourselves yeah. and you guys yeah. could have got thrown off the boat. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. But yeah, everyone was at the station and yeah. sorted out quickly. I love how when a problem occurs in this boat, the first thing to go do is go, okay, that's fine. What's next? What's the plan? Yeah. Every single time, that's the instant, instant reaction is, okay, it's all good, let's make a plan. And it works every single time.
This has been such a good passage. We could stay out here another week and definitely be okay with it. But Reuben or somebody before me put something on the chart that says drive through pizza. So maybe they're craving land a little bit more than I am. <laughs> Are you ready to arrive? I don't know, man. It's hard. It's kind of weird. I was listening to a podcast earlier from uh, Andy Shell, mm. and he interviewed this guy who's been sailing around the world for like 30, you know, for like 50 years. Like, they were both talking about long ocean passages and like the, the pattern you go through. Like when you first leave, it's kind of rough for the first three or four days, and you're kind of like, ah, oh, this kind of sucks. And then you get into this weird middle zone where everything slows down like the time minutes and hours are super slow but days speed by and it's like you can almost just be in that zone forever and a lot of people just go around the world because they just love that middle part zone mm. and then once you start to get close to your landfall your brain kind of changes and you're like well you're no longer thinking about the passage as like oh we're just out here for days and days you start like getting excited about getting to the place and I think it just hit me because I just did the calculations and uh, we're going to be there like within 36 to 42 hours. That's crazy. It is crazy. That means like tomorrow is like our last full day at sea, right? If you think about it like that. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. I just come to my, my watch and set the boat up for the day. It's kind of like a little ritual. You go through all the motions, you check everything, you turn all the buttons off and get everything bright again. And it's just a little morning ritual you do, like making a cup of tea. But the last few days have been awesome. No headache, no illness, and just pure joy. And, and getting to know these guys has just been awesome. And there's so much more to come, there's so much more to come. All right, I'm gonna carry my watch and listen to more music. Good. Just um, checking the weather and getting some informations. So these are the conditions right now. We have like 10 to 15 knots out of the southwest. So it's kind of coming on our starboard quarter. And then you see as this goes on by, I'd say Wednesday, we're going to be about right here. So we'll probably have a bit more wind. It's going to build a bit and uh, we'll have more wind behind us, which is good. And then there's a little bit of a hole that opens up there, so we might try and stay a little bit south and then come up into, into Flores. I think it's bittersweet because this passage has been so good and it's thrown so many different conditions at us, but it's been really good to teach sailing and to feel like it was a challenge. We've done so many sail changes. And as much as it's cool out here, we are excited to get to the Azores though too. Let's go set the downwind pole. How would you say the sea has changed you? 
Uh, I think I think the biggest thing that I've learned from the sea, I guess, or something that I am constantly reminded of, is to take things as they come. So even if things are going bad in any aspect of life, like don't run and don't try and fight it. It'll always get better eventually. Like it always goes in cycles, and it'll always be okay as long as you kind of let nature take its course and look at things with a positive attitude. I think the thing that I'm most grateful about the sea is that it's changed the way that I look at the world in a lot of different ways. It's this whole extra frontier that most people don't think about. They look at a globe and they think about all the places that they want to travel to on land. Oh, I want to go to Thailand or I want to go to South America or something like this. But then once you start sailing and you realize that people are actually crossing oceans, then you start thinking about, you know, courses that you want to sail and where you would want to stop on the way. And it takes the world from being travelable, I don't know if that's a word, but on just land to actually the entire globe. And that's pretty crazy if you think about it. So lucky to be out here. What are your kind of overall thoughts on the weather of this passage radio? Is that what you expected or? Yeah, I think I expected it to be a little bit gnarlier because I thought we were going to leave Bermuda and pretty much head dead north. Not dead north, but way do way more north, northern than we did. And once you get up around 40 this time of the year, that's right where the low pressures really kick through and you get hit by like really strong southwesterly. So I thought we were gonna do that, but when we went to leave, I just didn't see a reason to go that far north. Like we just kind of worked right underneath them. And then after one pass, we kind of popped up behind it. And now we're just getting sucked into the Azores perfectly. So it's definitely been calmer, but it's been more challenging than the South Atlantic because you have different systems and ever-changing condi conditions where the South Atlantic is just trades, just constant. So what do you think about doing it in this time of year as opposed to earlier or later? Well, I don't know. Sean did it earlier. You did it in May, right? Yeah. yeah so Sean did it in May. Uh, yeah, mid-April. And what were the conditions like out here in April? Um, it'll, you just amplify everything by two. Yeah. So yeah, definitely the conditions were a lot worse earlier on in the year. And now, like we just discussed, we just got to, you got to watch between, I wouldn't say leave later than July. Yeah, I think it's, it's, people are always trying to balance, like, the threat of the hurricane season matched with when the, the big North Atlantic, Azorean High and Bermuda High work together and just create this conveyor belt of wind taking you across to the Azores. And, like, to balance those two things out is what everybody's trying to do. But I think people tend to leave a little bit too early because they're too worried, they're scared of hurricanes, like that's the biggest threat. Yeah. When really, if you look at like pilot charts and stuff, the hurricanes don't start pumping through Florida and the Caribbean. I mean, you get you get early season hurricanes, but like end of July, August, September, the worst months. Yeah. So like leaving mid-June to late June, I think is perfect.
Yeah, I'd say I'd say this passage was very different for me personally compared to other ones in the past. First of all, I just know a lot more this time around, and I'd say on our first Atlantic crossing, I was kind of just like trying to acclimate to so many different things. Like, but this time it's been different. I've been way more hands-on and um, just in the decision-making and just having a way firmer grasp on, on everything, really. And we were trying to think about what we wanted to do for this season and Azores wasn't even on the kind of idea list at all. And then it was just like, Brady, what about the Azores? And kind of had that initial conversation which turned into another conversation which quite quickly turned into yeah let's do it let's not spend any more time in the Caribbean um, which would be kind of the easiest thing to do let's let's go sailing let's cross an ocean and let's get some cool people aboard and make a mission out of it and I'm really proud of me and Brady for making that decision this was definitely the more challenging option but because of that, it's already been, I think, the more rewarding option. And uh, yeah, I think we're really getting to the heart of the season right now. Like this passage leading straight into it, straight into the Azores. And I'm just excited to film. And uh, I don't know, see what happens from here. <laughs> That's it, peace out. can see Flores, finally. I just read that it was 914 meters tall, which means since we're like 27 miles away, we should be able to see it. Come on, look up here. What do you think? Yeah, that's land. That's land. Yeah. I get it now. <laughs> this is the most genuine smile. I am so happy. This is the most amazing experience. It's it's raw, it's real, and it's big. This is one of those moments that I will never, ever, ever forget in my life. This is amazing. Of course, it's good to not have expectations, but at the same time, you do kind of build some kind of expectations in your mind and then when you pull up there's just nothing that can compare to seeing it with your own two eyes not even close not even an inkling of how cool it is to actually be here <laughs> right in front of it sailing up to it, it feels so good Okay, perfect. Just right here, yeah? Just get like this. You want to just turn on the first place? Yeah. And then that hard leading screen will score. Let's 
Next up on Delos, we explore Flores Island by land, sea, and air. What happened to your clothes, Brady? That's gone. <laughs> Trim up, Brady. Trim up what? That mod, look at that. I don't think so. I'm still 200. New merch. Look at that merch. This is now available in the shop to buy. That's a Is sweet it, towel. They're awesome. Feel how soft it is. No, it doesn't stay forever. No, it's good today though. Let it stay for today. Oh yeah, how are you doing, mate? What's going on there? <laughs> What's wrong, Brady? Boys running around on my roof. When you're playing, get back to work. I'm looking for a war in my mind. And as I'm looking, my mind is completely blank. And when you pause for like a bit more than normal, you know, to find a world, it gets kind of weird, right? And I'm like, okay, now I have to say whatever shit just to fill the hole, right? And <laughs> it just like, Like that. Like, come on, just say whatever now. Like, they post this video for so long. <laughs> that is my life, bro. Okay, see you on. What's going on behind you? <laughs> We're getting it right? Yeah, it's close. <laughs> yep, yep, that's it. What are your first impressions, guys? Why not? Why not? A couple of beers later. <laughs> very fun. Very fun. Very fun. My first beer, Dad. Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> like it? I like it a lot. 